This episode is brought to you by the Denver Center for the Performing Arts. The Tony Award-winning DCPA is your source for exceptional plays and musicals crafted by and for the Denver community. The 2023-24 season just got started and features many incredible plays, including Stephen Sondheim's classic rom-com, A Little Night Music, and the holiday favorite, A Christmas Carol. Tickets for each show start at just $35, or you can bundle shows and save up to 21% with a season subscription. Learn more at denvercenter.org. Today on CityCast Denver, we're talking about all the food news you need to know. Did the new CBD cafe in Platte Park miss the boat or is it right on time? And we want to know, what do you think is the best bakery in the Denver metro? Today is Thursday, September 7th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Newsletter editor Peyton Garcia. Hello. Hey, Bree. Producer Paul Caroli, welcome back. Hey, Bree. Thanks for having me back. Of course, we we missed you, Paul. I know our listeners missed you, too. Aw. I'm just saying. I'm, I hope you had a good vacation. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it another another day. We're talking about food today. It's Thursday. We do our food roundup with Peyton Garcia, our newsletter editor, who's also our resident foodie. Um, I think before we get started, though, we've got some. We have an update on a conversation we had last week about common consumption. Mm-hmm. So this was a discussion around Old Town Arvada recently approving common consumption. Was that? Correct, Peyton. I did some reading up on this, and there's just a small clarification. So we were we were relating the common consumption thing to like New Orleans or Las Vegas. Yeah, as places where we thought this was a similar thing. You yeah, could wander yeah. around with drinks from bar to bar. Totally, and we were and wrong. it is very similar. The big difference that I've found is that so New Orleans and Las Vegas have open container status which means you can basically go anywhere you want with alcohol Mm, what's happening in colorado in these places like old town arvada and i think there's a place in the springs that does this um it's common consumption not open consumption and the only difference is that there's very strict parameters around where where you you take your alcohol and it's it's a group of businesses have to come together and be like, this is what we want to do. And then they, the city helps them set very specific boundaries. So the important thing that the that the city official wanted us to to realize is that you can't just go anywhere with your alcohol. It's not anywhere around Arvada. Yeah, okay. we're not going to turn into Bourbon Street, right? Um, but there's parameters. So okay. That's helpful. Yeah. That's helpful. So it's open container versus common consumption. We have some common consumption areas here. We are not an open container place. Correct. Cool. Okay. Well, thanks for- Good to know. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. Department of Excise and License, always thanks for coming through, helping us with information. Uh, Okay. So let's start with our stories this week. What's our first story, Pei? Yeah. So I am looking at Sapsua. And I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. Um, But this is something that I've kind of had my eye on all summer. It was um, like supposed to be one of the most like people were so excited for Sapsua to open. And it's a new Vietnamese restaurant that's opening on East Colfax. And well, it actually already opened on East Colfax. Um, And it even made Bon Appetit's list of most anticipated restaurants around the country. Really? Yeah. 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 Isn't that crazy? Right. I'm kind of I'm interested to know, like, I don't know how they find these restaurants or hear about them or what what makes well, how, what you need to make the list. But anyways, they they made that and it, it was all the talk, right? So I have not been there yet, but I really want to. Um, but our friends over at 303 Magazine, um, Colin Wren, he went and he wrote about it and he is saying Samsua is everything uh, it was promised to be. It's the place to see and be seen, apparently. Ooh, worth the hype. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I bring it up um, because I think you guys were saying um, you know a little bit about the history of the location of Sapsua, is that right? 
<laughs> I mean, I guess my I was very not skeptical. I was interested when I found out another restaurant was going into the space. So it's in the restaurant space at the Lowenstein Theater, which is part of the uh, Tattered Cover, Twist and Shout, um, C Film Center. Uh, it's like the adaptive reuse of that beautiful Lowenstein Chipotle Theater building. Also. Oh, ch- sorry, Paul. Chipotle is in there. <laughs> but it's in this location um, on the, it's like right, it's a beautiful patio right on Colfax. It has been 500 different things. Yeah. I mean, that's the question. Is it a beautiful location? Because it seems like one of those spots that might be a little bit cursed. I wondered about the curse too. Mm. I I ate at the last two iterations, which hilariously were the Good Son, and then which was like a they had Detroit style pizza, which was actually pretty good, but somehow got out out competed by Blue Pan just a few blocks away. But then the next place they named the Goods, which I'm sure was so they could keep most of the signage on that building. Yes, because they had noticed how the building they they just turned off the like uh, O and the N. They had a beautiful neon sign and like neon is expensive. And so I could see, I agree with you, Paul, though, where I was like, so they named this the goods. What did they serve at the goods? The goods, I I think think it was was like a new American place or something. It was very forgettable. I I don't, don't listen to me. I have no, I no memory. Um, But there, there was a part of me when I knew a new restaurant was going in that they was, uh, that they would call it the goo. Oh. But no, there was something between. I think there was something between Sapsua and the Goods, though, Paul. I think there was Route Forty. You think? I think it was Route Forty oh, I Cafe. That one entirely. That dang. says something, yeah. right? You can't even remember. Seriously, what was there? Peyton, I had to do like some serious West. I knew Westward had covered every iteration of this, and so I had to do some like Westward archival detective work to like figure out. I think it was Route Forty. Before that, it was the Goods. Before that, it was the Good Son. Before that, it was Sylvie's. Before that, or <laughs> Udi's, there was that whole thing with Udi's, the bread brand mm-hmm. that became Itai, oh, yeah. Sylvie's. It, yeah, it was yeah, the yeah. stupidest marketing nightmare of all time. And then before that, I think originally it was the it was Encore, which was a brunch restaurant, which I believe opened in the space in 2008 when they opened that new complex. So I don't blame people for trying. Like it seems a cool like a good spot. place for a restaurant. Yeah. Yet nothing has clicked. And Sapsua looks really good. I mean, yeah, I've been hearing good say. things all right. summer. It seems like a really exciting, different kind of menu. Like I was reading about the the couple um, that started this place. It's Anna Nguyen and Ni Nguyen. Ni yeah. Nguyen, who's a Vietnamese American group in Orange County. And there was just this great quote from 5280 about Ni Nguyen growing up eating like traditional Vietnamese food, but also like double doubles from In-N-Out Burger and how that combination informed the menu at this new place, like new twists on classic Vietnamese food, which to me is like someone who loves food sounds so exciting and interesting and new, like something I've never had before. But I wonder if that's too, too much, too adventurous for Denver. Like, do people know the Vietnamese classics that they're playing off of? I don't know. I I I need to, though. I found that interesting, too. I mean, it's an interesting juxtaposition, what you guys are saying about this, like, cursed spot, and then to have this new restaurant going in that's, like, supposed to be like like bonkers cool right kind of bra- groundbreaking um, yeah and they they describe themselves as non-traditional vietnamese and like you said paul i've heard that same thing that they're like kind of building off of traditional um knees building off of traditional vietnamese food that he ate growing up but like kind of adding a twist to it but i don't i don't know like the the personally i think the menu sounds slightly intimidating i mean they're, they're serving stuff like chicken liver toast, crispy veal sweetbreads with fish sauce. Um, just like really, I don't know. It, it, I, to, here's how I, I, my approach to this pay is it, when it, you talk about the intimidating nature of it, I think about uh, French cuisine 30 or 40 years ago in America. And it was treated sort of the same way. It was like, oh, this is like very um, upscale. Maybe we don't understand it completely. The, you know, the basic ingredients aren't things that we normally eat as Americans, but it had this elevated idea. And I just see this as like the next wave where some of these, um, cultural foods or cultural cuisines are, are getting the chance in the space to be elevated in a way where we are sort of being reintroduced to them, um, in this new format, because Vietnamese food is not uncommon here in, in Denver for sure. But, Seeing it in a new light, seeing it as the next wave of fine dining kind of is how I thought about it. Yeah, totally. I mean, I I love that. I I mean, this it looks great. It sounds great. I've heard nothing but 
but good things. They do they they describe themselves as non traditional and and informal. Uh, I don't know, but these dishes look fancy. I was like, I don't agree with the informal. It felt it, it, if the intim any, anything felt intimidating to me, it was how fancy it felt. Yeah, the the for sure. The pictures look fancy, but we'll have to go and try it for ourselves. I'm excited. I really, I hope this breaks the curse. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more food news. Okay, and we're back. Hey, what's our second story? Okay, second story is there's a new CBD coffee shop opening up in the Platte Park neighborhood. Um, it is called Lavender Coffee Boutique, and they plan on it's going to open sometime in this this fall. Uh, and they plan on serving up CBD coffees and teas, as well as other CBD products like face face lotions and bath salts. Um, what do you guys think about this? this cbd coffee thing uh honestly it feels a couple years late to me like cbd was such a fad back in 2017 2018 and i remember denver did have other cbd cafes at the time so it was a surprise to me to see the news that a new cbd cafe was opening in 2023 Hmm. that was my first response i i don't I don't know. I don't know. I think what what I found interesting about their process or their approach this time is they said where other places uh, in fee or put CBD into products with like an oil, mm-hmm. they infuse it into the coffee before it gets sort of it's like a pre it's part of a earlier part of the process. Well, that's interesting. Something. Yeah. Different. Which is always the argument for that is always like that's. Right. Yeah, the, it's the fa- it's faster. But with CBD, it's different than THC. Like it's not getting you high. Like this is more of like a calming thing. Yeah. And that's what I found interesting too is the owner said that the balance of the CBD with the coffee and the way that they make it is like it helps with the jitters. So you yeah. still get the energy of coffee, but you're more chill, which I loved that thought. I also love that. That's a great pitch. However, yeah. I don't know. As I maybe I'm outing myself as a CBD skeptic here, but when I saw this news about this new cafe opening, I went back and refamiliarized myself with the research around CBD to see what's what's new, what's the latest. And according to Harvard University's health uh, department, the current status is still more research needed on what the actual effects of this are. There are there are self reports of uh, you know people feeling. Uh, positive effects on anxiety, but the only promising studies have been really, really specifically focused on things like on kids and brain health. Hmm. Mm. So I, th- I think the science is still out on CBD. Well, self-reports, that's that's a legitimate thing too. I, I don't want to discount that. That's that's still real if you feel things. I'm also thinking about just like in general, the location of this place is great because it's at, it's by behind Lincoln's Roadhouse. Yeah. It's just, there's this corner of Platt Park where um, there's a lot of commercial space, but not all of it's being used. There's like a dead 7-Eleven. There's a dead restaurant that used to be Hanson's. I go across the street to Duffy Roll. They're like kind of a right around the corner from that. So if anything. Oh, I know this area. Yeah. So if anything, it's like a nice new coffee shop, which For sure. will always have For business. Sure. <laughs> uh, would I, speaking to what you said, Paul, about being late to the game, I like what the owner said, Lindsay Sozio. She said, it, uh, CBD, it's been around. It's not an easy space to play in. And we don't feel like anyone is doing it well enough. So she totally acknowledges that there's other places. There's there's other places right now who are selling CBD coffee. But her thing is she says they're not doing it good enough. And she's coming to change that. Well, it could be. She's She's got a distinct aesthetic. That, that website is slick. I oh, fully I believe this cafe will be beautiful. Okay. I mean, if it's got good coffee and it's in a good location, I think it's going to do great. Now we have a question for our audience and maybe we could discuss it too. What's your, what's your question this week? Yeah. So my foodie question of the week is what is your favorite Denver bakery? And and I bring this up because uh, the Denver bakers have come together to make the 5280 Pastry Co-op. Um, and their mission is to make Denver a destination for all things baked goods. Ooh. Watch out, world. The bakers are organizing. <laughs> These people get up early. I am, in, I am yeah, into apparently it. We're, I mean, if you're not, you know, if you don't know about Denver's baking scene, you're, you're sleeping because 
Apparently, we've got a really hot baking scene. Honestly, yes. Yeah, do you guys agree? I, totally yeah, I know agree. what Paul. I know what Paul's okay. favorite is. What is uh, it? Well, I have my my fave, my like reigning champion, but then there's something out on the horizon that I'm kind mm-hmm. of excited about. So I'll talk about my current fave first. Bon and Butter, which mm, is actually an Aurora out on East Colfax. It's like um like a French Vietnamese bakery, and their specialty is these. I mean, honestly, every time I go, it's the kind of situation where like I keep ordering mm-hmm. more and more food because I have my favorites, but I want to try something new on the menu too. And then everything is good. So I end up having like a banh mi, a strawberry cream croissant, a milk, a matcha milk cake cup. And it's just like everything has been good. They're doing so good. Um, but it's these strawberry croissants. They're like a smaller croissant filled with cream and fresh strawberries. Oh, man. It's so good. Oh, oh it's that beautiful. sounds it's so good. It's such a good. nice, like, it does. They it sell them that you can delicious. buy them by the dozen. Like, imagine showing up to a brunch like that or a party like or that. Or showing like, up to 12. the office with your three coworkers on Thursdays, maybe. <laughs> maybe I will. <laughs> maybe I will. Maybe I will. Um, but yeah, the, the Bon Mies are fantastic too. You can get a an ube, like a purple latte. That's always fun. It's not my favorite thing. I've heard, I've heard nothing but amazing things about Bon and Butter. I've, I've, yeah, people talk Same. about it. But Paul, you said um, beyond Bon and Butter, you said there's one on the horizon you're watching. What's the bakery? Haven't been yet, but I've heard that there is a place in Parker called La Poulette. Yeah, Poulette Bake Shop. It's new. I think they wanted to open in Denver, but couldn't find a space they could afford, which is kind of interesting that they ended up opening in Parker. Yeah. Um, So it's also not uh, open all the time. Like they're closed sunday monday and tuesday so like hmm. sunday morning that's a good bakery time for me so i haven't been able to make it out there but i do want to go i've just heard really hmm. really really good things okay all right i have a similar place that i haven't been able to go to because it has ridiculous hours and that you have to order in advance and they only have specific pickup times and they're only open certain days of the week at certain times anyway Jeez. it's called uh-huh. it's I'm called listening. parfait company in uh golden hmm. and it popped up on my instagram and it it filled. It looked like it filled the hole in my heart from when Andres, the uh, Swiss pastisserie in Cherry Creek, closed probably seven years ago, and I've not found a place that replaces like the beautiful little. They used to make a thing called a marzipan baked potato. It looked like a baked potato, but it was actually like a little pastry. My favorite was the Napoleon, which was this like crispy. It was like layers of crisp and custard with frosting on it. it was so good. And this parfait place in um, Golden looks like it could be that that thing i've been missing but i have not <laughs> i've not been able to like order and go when they're it's open. tough <laughs> bakeries especially the really good ones they yeah it's it's sometimes hard it's a whole thing trying it's a journey trying to get there yeah, yeah. there's another great spot on east cold facts called good bread that's similarly it's like only open on weekends and they Ooh. always have a line on saturday mornings apparently we do have a hot a hot bakery scene that i i want to totally shout out do. so my favorite and this is not in the city proper. This is for all my northern suburbanites. Um, <laughs> Moxie, which we've I think I've mentioned on the show before. They're huge. They were actually, I think, um, a James Beard nominated bakery, which is like super rare for a bakery to get to get acknowledged oh, by James Beard. Wow. Um, and they do incredible things. They're over in Louisville. And uh, when we used to live in Louisville, we'd go there all the time. They're they're amazing. And um Sadly, the owner passed away, I think, last year pretty unexpectedly, but the community rallied and I think he's got, I don't know if it's a spouse or a relative, um, somebody's running it now, but they're incredible. So that's Moxie. And then um, somewhere I haven't been while we're shouting out places we haven't been to, uh, but that I hear about all the time is Taste of Denmark in lakewood oh, oh yeah yeah over my like over my years writing our the newsletter, newsletter readers love that place yes yes we have i've had so many readers throughout my span writing the newsletter who've just written in and been like yo you ever been to taste of denmark it is incredible and now producer olivia huh. is commenting Chiming in our in. chat saying it's incredible <laughs> blown up the chat yeah i'm sorry i forgot to shout out my one place it's actually i've been to too which is gallo which is the Italian restaurant in Inglewood who makes uh, Italian wedding cookies. Their pistachio cookies are insane. Cannolis, eclairs. If you're a sugar freak, well, look Gallo's at that, guys. Place. Apparently, we could talk about bakeries all day. <laughs> we have a good list, but we want to hear from you. Um, give us a call on our hot pastry hotline, 720 500 5418. 
leave us a message with your name and neighborhood and your favorite bakery. Um, or you can email Peyton directly, denver at citycast.fm, and let her know what your favorite pastry spot is. Um, well, we could make a huge comprehensive list. I oh, think yeah. this could be a journey for us. All right. Send I'm me excited. your stuff and I'll put it in the newsletter. And now it's time for our official CityCast Denver. Maybe for your weekend is in maybe you'll see us there because as usual, there's so many cool things happening in Denver this weekend, but there's only one where you might see us. Peyton rounds up her best bets in our newsletter. Hey, Denver every week. And she's here to give us her top picks. Uh, Peyton, what do we got coming up this weekend? Mm-hmm. Okay. So to start Friday, kicks off the 10-day gigantic Denver Mineral Fossil Gem and Jewelry Show. Hey! Yeah! Denver Coliseum. It's back again. <laughs> the Fossil and Mineral Show. Every year. Uh, it's, uh, we love it. There's 10 days? Yeah, That's it's like the stock days. show. It, yeah, it kicks off on the 8th. Um, the people who are into it are into it. Uh, I've never been. Have either it. of you been? No. Never? Me neither. But you know Me what? Neither. I wouldn't I wouldn't hate to go. It's like one of those things where I would I would definitely check it out if the stars aligned and I got there. Yeah, I'd probably end up having a great time. Me too. I think so too. It's one of those things that you're just not sure about, but then you go and you end up loving it and then you become one of those people that's like, yeah, the Denver Mineral Fossil Gem and Jewelry <laughs> Show. Um <laughs> But yeah, so that's happening starting on Friday till the 17th. It's 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Uh, their wow. website looks like it's made of um, clip art on a Word from document. GeoCities. Yes. Uh, I think it'd be a cool thing to like take Montgomery to, Brie. I know. I bet he'd be way into it. All right. What else we got, Peyton? So I've talked about Denver Botanic Gardens events, and I can never put them in the roundup because like their events sell out really early but now that we're doing this on thursdays i think we have a little bit more of a chance to get tickets so i did check this one um and when i checked there were still tickets available okay um this one is happening friday evening and it's at denver botanic gardens in cheeseman park uh it's called cuisine and culture tracing andy and culture so we'll have a professional chef at the denver botanic gardens um that is going to take you on a culinary journey of people and culture through food uh so it sounds like like the andes mountains andean i think yes. so yes like peru uh-huh uh-huh yeah and so they will teach you this these chefs are going to teach you how to make things with using like um, indigenous ingredients, uh, a lot of which are sourced from their very own CSA at Chatfield Farms. Cool. Um, so the whole thing includes uh, the 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 class, and then all of the ingredients and tastings. Oh. And it's only twenty two dollars for general admission, eighteen dollars if you're a member at the gardens. Wow, that that is an act fast. Situation. That's what I'm that saying. That sounds great. And we'll fill up. Yeah. Check it out. I think this one would be cool. You'd probably learn something uh, really fascinating and uh, get to eat some really dope food, too. So, you know, that's what I'm all about. Great, Love it. Okay. What else you got? Okay. Next up, this one is happening Saturday in Wheat Ridge. It's the International Heritage Festival slash Oktoberfest. Hmm. 46th annual festival or yeah so they've been doing this um since 1976 it's a celebration of folk arts uh from around the world and there's lots of dancing international dancing um they lots of dancing lots of dancing (laughs) i just pictured like an international dance battle like different (laughs) groups of people from around the world like maybe the peruvian dancers Mm. against the chinese maybe that's i mean it says the festival features dance groups representing a wide range of cultures from mexico india germany lithuania scandinavia africa native america and many many others it's free awesome yeah free open to the public family friendly um it looks really fun. All the all the like the getups, the cultural um like outfits and it's just cool. I love any kind of opportunity to explore the world from right here in Denver. And this has been going on for 46 years in Wee Ridge. I can't believe I've never been. There. I know. This right? feels like a must must do. Yeah. Yeah, and it's at see. Anderson Park in um Wee Ridge. Oh, it looks awesome. What's our final pick, Pay? Okay, our final pick is on Sunday morning, and it is the 9-11 Heroes Run. Mm, yes. Um, this is happening in Lowry. 
Uh, registration starts at $25 and goes up depending on on what you pick. There's like a fun run. There's a 1K. There's a 5K. Um, there's also uh, rucking. Go, Yeah, rucking. You guys know what rucking what is? is? No. No, not familiar. So rucking is when you run with, or maybe it's go rucking. So you do the run, but you fill the rucksack with oh. heavy weight as if like, so the same way that our um, our armed forces soldiers, they have all of that stuff in their packs. Oh, it's like, right. yeah. It's like making it, it's like yes. how hard it is to run. Yes. I think about this too with firefighters mm-hmm. when they do like mm-hmm. the packs. So you you fill up your backpack with and you meet a certain weight and then you do the run like that, which I've always thought is super cool. It's always something that I thought would be fun to try. Pain, I'm only laughing because I feel like you and I are kind of lazy and we might yeah. just watch people yeah, do I'm that. Yeah, I'm saying <laughs> I want to try it. Um, I don't. I like to watch other people do the hard work. That's it. I've done admi- a Spartan admire race. Admire them from afar. I've done a Spartan race and it was fun. It was fun. Oh, it's hard. Have. Okay. I um, judged you. But okay. no, you judged me correctly. <laughs> I was pressured. <laughs> I wore a t-shirt that said my family forced me to do this. Um, <laughs> And I did cry <laughs> at one point. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. I would have cried the whole time. All right. So we got the Denver <laughs> Gem and Mineral Show. The Denver Fossil Gem Mineral and Jewelry Show, Paul. <laughs> How could I forget? The Cuisine and Culture at Botanic Gardens, a trip through the Andes, International Heritage Festival slash Oktoberfest in Wheat Ridge, and the 9-11 Heroes Run in Lowry. You know, I mean, I'm just going to go... My pick would be the Denver Fossil Mineral Gem and Jewelry Show because I've never been. And you know what? I've been advertised it many times as I drive down I-70. Yeah. Honestly, past the Coliseum. That was thought about my it. vote too. It would be nice to see some of these minerals, gems, fossils, and jewelry <laughs> pieces. <laughs> see the story behind the billboards. Because yeah, I'm the same way. It's like I've just seen the billboards everywhere. I've I need to actually... see the people and the who's who are the gem freaks in this city. I want to meet them. I'm getting a little excited about it. That could be the one. That yeah. could be the one. Yeah. All these years. All these years and I've never gone. So <laughs> maybe this weekend. Maybe this weekend. Okay, then the official City Cast Denver maybe for your weekend is the Denver Mineral Fossil Gem and Jewelry Show starting Friday, running for 10 days at the Coliseum. Um, But Peyton's got plenty more recommendations in our newsletter, Hey Denver, which you can subscribe to right now at denver.citycast.fm. And also, we wanted to ask you to let us know if you go with our maybe. If you go out and check out any of the events we talked about, post a pic and tag us on social media at CityCast Denver. We are very much on Instagram these days. Um, But we want to know if people are actually tuning in and, and checking out the events that we recommend. So let us know. Paul, Pete, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Bree. See you next time. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed the show, why not take a minute to tell the rock collectors and crystal girlies in your life about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Denver, and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye-bye. Okay, and now, uh, what's up, Paul? No, no, I'm just okay. breathing weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Breathe you know, normal, Paul. Snorting, <laughs> spitting, <laughs> hacking, wheezing. No. Don't worry about me.